Hello everybody! Are you ready to shop for fossils? We go to mineral shows regularly and for a long time, often taking short videos to be able to see the items on display later and relive the event. It's time to share some of that footage, but first, let me say thank you to those vendors and collectors who did not mind us recording the videos of their specimens. I think our viewers are about to appreciate it. I usually do not like to show fossils with price tags, but this time I guess it's okay. It will give you an idea of the approximate price that common fossils may fetch in California. Just remember that videos were taken years ago at various places. The price may change, plus the real cost of the goods always equals the amount somebody is willing to pay for them, right? One time, we saw a beautiful collection of echinoderms on display. Sea urchins, sea stars, crinoids. Just imagine how many hours of painstaking work were put into preparation of these specimens. Only those people who are really passionate about revealing every minute detail of a fossil can do such beautiful work. The collection of fossilized fish was also impressive. I never saw so many different and so many gorgeous specimens of the fossil fish in one place. This is a reconstruction of an ancient armored fish. And this is a real fossil from the Devonian period. The small plates with little fish called nydia are from the famous Green River Formation in Wyoming. These show up regularly and in large quantities. The origin is a bunch of commercial quarries near the town Camerere in southwest part of Wyoming. Some of them are accessible for amateur fossil hunters. They let visitors dig for a fee. And I guess if you collect fossilized fish, it should be called fossil fishing instead of hunting. Another usual item is a megalodon tooth, or pieces of it. They are really large, massive, and heavy. When you take them in your hand, it should feel like you are handling a stone. If it's too light, it's probably a copy. If you are worried about buying a fake, look for evidence of painting as well. Under high magnification, fine microstructures can be noticed on the enamel. That would be a reliable way to recognize a forgery. Perfect megalodon teeth can be pricey. So most of ours have some kind of defect. Be aware that bones and teeth from Florida and the Carolinas may have elevated level of radiation. Keeping them too close for too long may not be a good idea. 
That is true for dinosaur bones as well. We bought a Geiger counter at one point, and Dad had to bury a cross-section of a dino bone. It's not like it was very radioactive, but he did not want to take any chances. And with radiation, it's always about probability. We have a video on this channel describing how we test radioactivity of common fossils. Check it out if you have concerns or just starting to collect fossils. Look at this crinoid. It has a tube in the middle of the crown, and this tube was used to extrude waste. We have a few tiny parts of this tube in our Carboniferous fossil collection. Echinoderms are quite common. They can be well preserved in fine marine sediments, and are relatively easy to clean. Here is a massive sea urchin, Clypeaster campanulatus. What a specimen to have in your collection. Many commercial fossils come from Africa, Morocco, and Madagascar. In those countries, professional diggers find plenty of fossils with good preservation. Sometimes, I feel like abundance brings down the monetary valuation and even desirability. And often, you can find a gorgeous fossil for an affordable price. Unfortunately, Sometimes the preparation work is too excessive and makes the fossil look slightly unnatural, resembling a victim of cosmetic surgery. Fakes are also possible. Nevertheless, ammonites, mosasaur teeth, trilobites, and shark teeth all have more or less standard appearance, and they are in seemingly unlimited supply. This makes them an obvious choice for traders, and those fossils contribute a lot to bringing paleontology closer to us, regular people, and to maintaining the interest of fossil collecting. This is a stromatolite, likely conophyton from the Precambrian time, probably the oldest fossils you can find at gem shows. It's at least 600 million years old, but stromatolites are known to be even 3 billion years old. Petrified wood is a separate story. Some of the slabs are spectacular, but hardly affordable. A while ago, we posted a video describing our collection. At the gem shows, we mostly look for colorful, polished pieces among the tumbled rocks. Well, thanks for exploring the world of commercial fossils with us. Check out our other videos where we show, in detail, and give information about the specimens from our collection, including various microfossils, but also ammonites, shark teeth, crinoids, solitary corals, trilobites, and other fossils. If you live in California, we recommend you check out the Spring Gem Show in Turlock, San Jose, Mariposa, and Roseville. Come enjoy the fossils and touch them. Unlike museums, the vendors will let you handle the specimens. You will get a full-scale experience and, who knows, maybe take one or two fossils home. Good luck!